Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, geeks of all ages, I'm Justin Cavender, and welcome to Comic-Con. I'm sitting here with Gail Simone, who uh, we know as a writer for uh, Batgirl, freaking Red Sonja, and now just announced here at Comic-Con, uh, Tomb Raider. And so that is a trifecta of kick-assery. <laughs> and so uh, we just wanted to see how you're doing. How are things? Things are amazing. This has been an incredible time. Uh, it's so fun to be able to write th this many different kick-ass female characters. Uh, none of them are the same at all, other than the fact that they're proactive and and you know are strong-willed and have you know make up their own mind about what they want to do and how they want to do it. But it's very fun to have the complete differences of these female characters and show that. Yes, there are female characters, and they can be completely different from each other. Absolutely, and what comes to mind with like contrasting these characters, like as far as Batgirl and and Tomb Raider, like when I play a Tomb Raider game, I kill every bastard that's in my way. <laughs> Whereas like someone like Batgirl, you know, she just beats him up and then you know sends him off to jail. Um, is that going to be fun for you to be able to just have Laura just shoot people, or even like Red Sonja chopping off? like heads and that sort of thing? Is it fun to just kind of like get that anger out? Like, oh, I had a bad day, you're gonna die. Writing Red Sonia is so much fun. It, just to be able to, I love sword and sorcery and I love barbarian uh, material anyway. And just to be able to take the ultimate female barbarian and, and make her drink and uh, kind of wear her heart on her sleeve and be very hot blooded and quick to react, you know, so quick to chop off heads, if you will, is just been, amazing and then with Laura Croft she's she's a lot more uh, I would say intellectual than Red Sonia even though she you know will shoot you or, or you know take care of business as she needs but the story that we're focusing on is more about her she has a lot of questions a lot of questions about the world around her about the world that she thought existed or that she thinks may exist and so she's really a quester a questioner and she wants to find out these answers and she is determined to find them and so if you're in her way watch out <laughs> okay now so i was a really big fan of the game that square enix released uh, earlier this year played it all the way through from start to finish i was just blown away and it was a really dark tone and and laura found herself in a in a really dark place and she was able to, to spoiler alert able to crawl out into the light <laughs> and uh, everything was well by the end of it now is is the new Tomb Raider comic is it going to have those same dark tones or is it going to be more like the the Laura Croft that we all grew up as young boys with like oh Laura yeah how's it going <laughs> it's going to be much closer to the tone of the video game um, she is off the island so she's globe trotting so she won't be it won't feel quite as claustrophobic, if you will, as the game did, which I also played that game from beginning to end, and I don't do that very often. I don't have time for one thing, but I was so immersed in that story and the character of Lara Croft and the humanity that they were able to bring with that game that when I was asked if I was interested in, in writing the um, comic, at first, when I, I hadn't played the game yet, and at first like, oh, Lara Croft, that'd be fun. I'm a big fan of, you know, the the original Lara Croft game. She uh, she's aristocratic and aloof and smart and and you know really groundbreaking for that time. So I'm like, yeah, that'd be fun, but I wasn't, you know, it wasn't like completely excited yet but after playing the game I was like this Lara Croft this excites me this is amazing we're telling stories of her when she's you know just trying to figure things out and I am just blown away by that game what Rihanna Pratchett and the team did with her characterization that I'm really honored and really excited to be able to take her story a little bit further and and uh, get her on some adventures that are exciting but yeah Tonally, it's going to be real, pretty similar. That's good because I mean, I felt like I was able to relate to it a little bit more because I was genuinely concerned for Laura. I didn't. I always felt horrible when I, I killed her on accident because there was like this brutal like death scene. I was like, oh my god, I just I killed know. Laura. I'm a terrible person. So uh, that was the first time a game has ever been able to really do that for me. Well, yes, and you feel her starvation, and you feel her, you know, coldness and, and isolation and all of that when you're playing the game. And when the first PR was released and they said, oh, well, you want to protect Laura, after playing the game, I was like, screw that, I want to be her. I want to be someone who can come out of something like this and and um, be that strong and accomplish that. It, it just, yeah, you want to see her succeed in that game. Absolutely. And um, I have a quick... Um death of the family question. <laughs> um, it had to have been pretty cool uh, writing 
Joker material, I would imagine. Uh, it's a pretty big deal in the DC universe. And there's a moment when, when Barbara Gordon is just reliving the moment where she gets shot and uh, she's got like a chainsaw and she's just ready to just put it right in the Joker's face. And um, what, do you, what do you think? Do you think if she wasn't stopped by that, that goon and the, the, the henchman in the back, do you think that she would have gone through it or do you think maybe at the last second or her better side would have uh, taken over? I don't think that's who truly Barbara is. I think the Joker pushed her to her limits, and you know, there's going to always be that that uh, question of do you get rid of someone to save a bunch of other people, or you know, do, are you going to be a murderer yourself? I just don't think that's who Barbara is. But who knows? I think a lot of people can be pushed <laughs> pushed in that direction. But you know, whereas someone like Red Sonia. <laughs> I think, I think the, the Joker would have had a lot to worry about. <laughs> um, we actually have a Twitter question. Um, we blasted the airwaves, letting everybody know that we were going to be interviewing you. And um, Il per at Il Perrin wants to know, um, what's your most favorite story that influenced you to be a writer? Oh, my gosh. You know, that is such a difficult question because I started reading at a really young age and haven't stopped. And I read everything. I read fiction. I read nonfiction. I read history. I, you know, I read everything. And I, I don't know if I can pick out one definitive story. I have several. Like when I was first reading Grant Morrison's Animal Man and uh, Alan Moore's Swamp Thing, I think those were the times when I was thinking, you know, comics can really reach out and grab you emotionally in a different way than just punching and kicking and getting bad guys. So right. those, and which I'm fine with that. I love punching and kicking and getting the best of the bad guys. But those comics, um, the the writing and the emotion and the tone really hit me. Um, Frank Miller's Daredevil at that time did. And, and I'm also, I'm inspired by stories by Shakespeare and, you know, from all different genres. So it's a very difficult question for me to really pin down and, and answer. She had, a, she had an interesting follow-up with uh, what do you think uh, your biggest accomplishment is, or your biggest achievement is in your career so far? I think just the fact that I've been able to be here for, you know, 10 years now <laughs> is a pretty great achievement. Um, I'm really proud of that. I'm really proud that... Um, to see that the attendance at the conventions is skewed a lot differently than it was 10 years ago. And in fact, I don't know if this is a true fact or not, but someone told me that last year the stats said that the attendees at Comic-Con were more female than male last year. So not confirmed fact, but even just to think about that as a possibility is quite amazing. And um, just all the different people that I meet that love these strong female characters that are starting to really relate to them and connect, that I think that's what I really am really proud of and happy that people have been willing to take a look at and get involved and enjoy these ladies' stories as well. Have you uh, had an opportunity to walk around and, and pick up uh, any fun stuff, or have you just uh, been pretty like locked down? I know like some of us, when we, when we were like, oh my god, I gotta have that, that's like the coolest thing ever. Yes, I've seen lots of things just walking by quickly that I said, oh my god, I gotta have that. But I haven't bought, purchased anything yet. Usually Sunday is the day that's a little bit slower for me, and I get to get out and actually make some purchases and, and you know get my nerd on. <laughs> do you, um is your house like totally decked out in like Wonder Woman and Batgirl stuff, or are you uh, or do you have like a like a special little bat cave that you have all your fun stuff in? <laughs> the stuff has completely taken over my house. It's not even funny. <laughs> I have a small house, and it's everywhere. In fact, I. Uh, one of the things we talked about before coming to Comic Con is we need a larger storage unit to put some of this stuff in. It's just crazy, but it's hard to choose what to put away because you love it so much. I've got the Barbie um, Batgirl Bat Cycle, and I I just ha I have some amazing early Mary Marvel stuff, and it's just I, yeah, it's everywhere from mugs to art, just you know. Right. All right now. I guess I should ask, are you able to tell us when we can expect the first issue for Tomb Raider? Um, we haven't really set a date yet. It really is early days. Um, we're well underway of writing the first issue. I've been talking back and forth with Dark Horse and Crystal Dynamics and Rihanna Pratchett and everything. And, and you know, the planning stages are always what take a, a good amount of time. But now we're ready to go on full board. So we'll, Perfect. we'll let everyone know as soon as we have a little bit firmer date. Uh, I just want to say thank you very much for your time. Um, we are all big fans. We love all your work, and uh, we look forward to reading Tomb Raider. Oh, thank you so much. I'm really excited about this project. It, 
I am a huge lover of anthropology, archaeology, and history, and kick-ass female characters. So this is something that I'm really dying to really get home and really, you know, knuckle down and, and start working on. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. Well, thank you very much.